In this case, we will discuss the optimization of IBM Flash behind SVC. The IBM Flash systems are fast. In order to keep them moving at flash speeds, it's important to understand the best way to configure them. One of the hardest things to do when measuring configuration changes is quantifying the performance impact of an issue. With IntelliMagic Vision, we're going to show how easy it is to compare the performance with and without cache enabled and the impact to front-end write response time. With SVC write cache enabled, during normal write cache operations, a host write will enter the preferred node's cache and then it will be sent to the partner node. Upon completion of the write by the partner node, the host receives an acknowledgement that the write has completed. The write is then scheduled for destage to the backend storage, or in the case of data that needs to be replicated, will be scheduled for replication as well. When the write cache is disabled for a volume on SVC, the write will not be placed in the SVC cache, nor will it be mirrored to the partner node. It will just pass through the SVC and go directly to the backend storage controller. In reality, there is coordination between the SVC host and the backend that I did not include in the diagram in order to keep it manageable. It has been suggested that in order to maximize throughput for large sequential operations on SVC volumes residing entirely on IBM flash systems, that you should consider disabling the right cache. During this use case, we're going to look at whether or not this is true for the workload that we examined. This chart represents the front-end write response time for SVC, SVC001, for storage pool EP flash underscore 3. The chart on the left represents the time period when the write cache was enabled, and the chart on the right represents the time period when the write cache was disabled. The average write response time increased 95.21% and by a real value of 1.88 milliseconds when the write cache was disabled on SVC. Disabling the write cache was very detrimental to the write response time. In this case study, we demonstrated how disabling the write cache can be detrimental to the write performance in an SVC environment for this particular workload. Does anyone remember the name of this vehicle and what movie it was from? Yeah, that's right. It's a DeLorean from Back to the Future. And just as sometimes the stock configuration does not always achieve the desired results, sometimes the back-end configuration has to be tweaked to get the best performance out of your Spectrum virtualized environment. In this case, we're going to look at HDS, VSP, residing behind IBM SVC. The configuration of the back-end is very important and can affect the front-end performance on SVC. For the HDS VSPG family, it's very important to configure the HDS host connections correctly in order to optimize performance. In this example, we'll take a look at an IBM SVC using HDS VSP as the storage backend. In the next screen, I'm going to show you the SVC front-end dashboard. In order to identify the key risk indicators for the systems running Spectrum Virtualized Software. And it's based on the storage pool front end metrics. Each row in the dashboard represents a different system running Spectrum Virtualized, and the columns along the top show the different risk indicators. The rating is just a way of measuring the intensity of the risk, with zero being no risk, and three indicating significant risk. And by hovering over each bubble, you can actually see the ratings and tooltips for each of the metrics. The SVC front end dashboard shows that all is well. The SVC front end dashboard shows the measured performance between the SVC and the attached host. Since this view provides the performance perspective of the host attached to the SVC, it's probably the most important report to look at. While the SVC front end dashboard may show that everything is healthy right now, there may be issues downstream on the attached storage that could under the right workloads cause performance issues on the front end. So in this next dashboard, we're going to take a look at the SVC backend dashboard. The SVC backend dashboard reveals the health of the SVC backend storage. Ideally, the external response times should be low and there should be no queuing. Notice that this dashboard is red and shows a red bubble for the external read response time, external queue time, and external read queue time for SVC. On the other hand, 
SVC002 is not having any issues. There's definitely a significant amount of read queuing on SVC01. So let's take a look at the external read queue time in this next chart. This chart shows the external read queue time for SVC01. There's significant queuing happening at the SVC level. Let's see if the queuing is happening on all of the managed disks. We'll look at that in the next chart. This chart shows the top 50 managed disks associated with this SVC for all storage pools. In the legend, you can see that all of the managed disks that are in bold, those having an issue, also have the name SSD in them. This is really interesting. The fastest devices with the lowest service time have the highest queuing. All of the SSD devices are LUNs carved from SSD RAID groups on a VSP. The next step in this investigation was to determine how the backend VSP system's host entries were configured for the SVC host group on the HDS VSP. It turned out that the VSP host entries for the SVC were set to standard, which is default. They should have been set to Windows. Once this was changed, the queuing cleared up immediately. I hope you enjoyed this case study. And remember, the default is not always the best choice. I hope you enjoyed learning about these SVC Spectrum virtualized case studies as much as I enjoyed discovering them for the first time. For more information, please contact me at brett.allison at intellimagic.com.